versus Super uh, is just around the corner. Now, look, Super has been the black sheep in this group. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, Rogue, Solar, Tasia, these guys have all been giants in different periods of StarCraft II, and they're all kind of looking like giants right now. Um, Super's good. He's always been around. I would put him at, like, C tier, though, for... Yeah, no, he's a guy that you don't know if he's going to make it in each, each season. Yeah, and when he does, we kind of expect him to be knocked out in the first round. Absolutely. Um, so Tasia is expected to win this, I think it's fair to say. We'll see. Those Supers seem to have some good builds planned. Yeah, yeah. It's a very different matchup on yes, both sides. Yes. So. Requires a lot of different skill sets. We're going to go to Eternal Empire for game number one. Tasia versus Super starts now. Team Liquid Teja, Union Song. Team GP Hugo, So Song. All right. I'm excited to see what, what Super has planned here. I think that Teja. Uh, I've always felt like he is really good at late game TVP. Uh, of course, we saw that weird best of three where he did the same all in three games in a row, and that did not work. It was like kind of the, one of the, it was like the computer is broken type moments. Yeah, it was like it was a campaign mission <laughs> where the computer plays like a multiplayer player, but you're going to learn how to stop it eventually. Um, look, I think that that was an exceptionally bad series from him. I think had he made it work, it would have been so cool. Yeah. But uh, when it doesn't work, it's literally a, a perfect educational example of why you can't just do the same thing over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Let's see what his uh, plans are overall in this series. But as far as Super goes, I, I kind of want to see him play aggressive. There's nothing about Super's play, past or present, that makes me think he can beat Tasia in a positional macro game. Yeah, I, so I, I would wanna, agree I want to see him do something somewhat sharp, you know? Well, what do you think about, uh, you know, this style that we've seen, especially in 2020, where they get stalkers out and try to put pressure on, um, Try to blink in. I mean, oh, that, would, would yeah. that be like a style? You, blank. Yeah, would that be a style you think would be acceptable here, or do you mean something even more dramatic? I would want something more dramatic out of him, to be perfectly honest. Wow. Okay. Uh, it looks like it's probably a blink opener, and that is—it's good for everything. Whether you're doing an all-in or a defensive play, a blink opener is great. But let's see where he goes with that. Just poking in with this adept. Not gonna find too much. Looks like a Widow Mind Drop will be coming up pretty soon here. To watch for the timing of that armory if it does come. And Atasia overall, what's most exciting about what he's done, especially today as an example, is he's showing he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with in macro games that are, are crazy complicated. Yeah. Right? I mean, when you have the map really split in half and you're having to attack different locations and, and, and fan out, um, it's very difficult and requires a lot of experience. And uh, I think we're going to have to change the way we think of Tasia as a player from the past as he's really someone who's quite good in the present. Um, and, and I'm hoping we get to see a little bit of that. I think Artosis is right in that 
We uh, will probably have to see something pretty dramatic, though, from, from Super, which well, would have been, he would avoid that phase of the game. He's doing that right now. It looks like a DT drop is going to be uh, the name of the game here from him. We'll see what where, he can get done with it. Where is the DT tech placed, actually? It's in the main, I believe. Because it seems like this Widow Mine drop is going to come in, and this could inadvertently spot the DT tech. Yeah, it's, it's possible that he rockets through and drops one here when he sees no stalkers. There's only a stalker in the wall, so... Okay, okay, both go here. This is pretty important. Yeah. Okay, so he gets a Stalker in, and two probes and gets out with one Widow Mine. So it's a Ooh. good drop. Oh, this is the important part, though. He sees it. Oh, he knows. Oh, man. And even if the Widow Mine doesn't get the bro in time, this is what's more important. Yeah. Well, Pulls that was, the SCVs out. That was truly huge to get that scout off because that w the thing is the damage wasn't that much. It didn't matter that much for Super as long as he gets his DTs going. But now that Tasia can just play exactly anti this. Still, look at this. This is some this is good damage. Doesn't quite pick for it up. A sec, I thought it was Needs to get, get it more over. DTs though. Look, Raven just started. Yep. He doesn't have a scan right now. <laughs> Despite scouting it, it you know it might do a lot of damage still. Taking out the SCV that's making the turret, the constructed turret goes down as well. The follow-up from DT is never a clean one, but if the DTs do enough damage, you don't need to have a clean follow-up because they're already behind. Dude, look at this. He's actually doing so much. Good pickup. Gets out with his DTs. He's only lost one DT and two probes and one stalker this game. That's like really awesome damage. This has been a fantastic DT draw. Okay. And it's actually not done yet. Oh my gosh. Where's that right. Raven? There it is. Might disable it here. No, I'm actually okay, surprised. Okay, he picks up quick. Surprised <laughs> he had the balls to even <laughs> drop it out again. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's a great way to lose two DTs. Yeah. Okay, so we see Colossus tech on the way. I think that's a good follow-up, right? You do this much damage with it. Yeah. Get some solid splash damage while you take your third. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. The this has been just such a nice opener for Super. I think this is a done. I think it's a done, too. It's a done. <laughs> that was me saying it's done, but with an Italian accent. <laughs> Um, he's gonna have to recall this bag. Oh, does that? Nice. Oh, Tasia. Always with the handsome place. You devil, you. Look at this, he has a cloak. Let's see what he gets done with this. Another I know this exactly moment from Tasia. Mm -hmm. All right, gonna leave that. Uh, Banshee sitting behind the third base. So Protoss expands up into a third here. Um, Thermal Ants is inbound here. Uh, the DTs are not gonna do much else from here on out. You know, when you get enough detection in StarCraft II, the DTs are not strong, um, just as a unit that can take a fight. That's why Blink occasionally they get good, because they can Blink on top of something. Yeah, it, well, they just, they don't have any real staying power. I mean, make Archons, that's about it, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Mech Tasteless, probably. McDonald's. Three, two more factories. <laughs> McDonald's, that's right. what you have to say about that. That's my analysis. He took a lot of damage. So if you're going mech and you already, yeah, and you already took damage from a DT rush, I mean, you know, one thing that's a feature of mech is you don't get uh, a lot of freedom to engage them early on. No, it seems not. like you would get to engage them even later on if you were going mech. I could see him, like, I could see this being even maybe reactive. Maybe he wanted to go mech the whole time, but he might look at this and say, God, I took so much damage that I'll just die to like a charge lot Archon attack, you know? But if you're going mech and you make walls, yeah, eh, things can go wrong as Protoss trying to attack into that. Look at that, triple tech lap. <laughs> He's also getting Banshee speed. All right, all Please. right, I'm, I'm down with what Tasia's dealing up. Now, this seems like if he's going to get tri triple tech lab, it's going to be just a lot of tanks. He's still banshee, like you were saying, Artosis. But this seems like it's going to oh. be an even later possible push. This oh, yeah. No, he's, not, he's not pushing. He's going to be playing single player for a while now. Yeah, for sure. You're, you're definitely right about that. Does Protoss know about the mech, though? This is a thing that can not. happen is you're on your side of the map. You're playing. 
you're, you're in the game that you think might be, you know, against mm -hmm. standard comp, and then when the armies engage, you go, oh, he's got that? Well, think about this, Tasteless. Like, you might have an early prism for your build, but eventually they keep it out of their base. Other than that, what do you have to scout? Yeah, observers are not going to get in there easily. In fact, yeah. observers are being used defensively, and I think part of the rationale for Super even doing that is he already thinks he's ahead. He killed enough workers, but, yeah. you know, again, you face off against the wrong comp. Colossus is not really what you want against mech, generally. Well, oh, that was a and, great pick off there. Yeah, seeing that many tanks, I think he's probably starting to realize what's going on. I'm a little bit surprised that CC was made out there. Is there no detection here? You might be able to actually hit that with the Banshees. Uh, you might be right. Well, there was a, 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 a hold position uh, observer somewhere. What do we call it when the observer just stops and gets... Siege mode. Siege mode. <laughs> it's not what it's called, but that's what I was thinking of. That's what I always yeah, call it. That yeah. and overseers. Any, like, any any unit, yeah. Whenever something plants itself it's, it's and can't siege be moved, mode, yeah. it's siege mode. It has to just be the older they ability just, name. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it increases range too? Okay, siege, siege mode. mode. <laughs> it shouldn't be able to detect things directly under it to really make a siege mode. <laughs> So there's five bases now being taken here. Um, you know, with Mac, you you get your place in the game a little bit later, but when it's your time to come out, your army is generally stronger, almost always. Yeah. So we're waiting to see how exactly uh, this push is going to come here. Well, Tasha's recovered really well. He's got a pretty solid amount of workers at 69. Uh, his supply looks very, very good at the moment. But I like that Super is just kind of mass expanding and adding gates on, right? He's getting lots of upgrades at the moment as well. I think that's a really important thing. Like, if your opponent's going mech, make a lot of nexuses. Yeah. Do not be sitting on any small amount. Just doesn't make sense. It's very stalker heavy right now. And there's things you can do with them, but like when you look at this composition that Super has, it's just, it's not a very good composition against mech. There's some counterattack potential. Maybe the Colossus can help whittle down some things in the front. Yeah, man, but at the end of the this. day, the C-Chain counters every unit he has. Yeah. <laughs> and there's enough other units present here that it's that, that, that they can buffer in enough time for the siege tanks to get maybe three shots off and everything is dead. Yes, yes, exactly. All right, here we go, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Exactly. If you, if you step into the artillery range of those tanks, you're gone. Melted. Obliterated. The tanks are hot lava. Is that show any good, by the way? Oh, it's one of the worst shows I've ever seen my whole life. Really? Yeah. All right, get ready. The tanks are hot lava. <laughs> I still watch it, by the way. What is this? It? Oh, it's a terrible obstacle course. Oh, I love obstacle course shows. Yeah, you should watch this. They pretend that they their friends die when they go under the lava. Oh, that makes it even better. <laughs> No, All I right. see. Here we go. It's, this is kind of a weird engagement because Tasha just he engaged with a like piece of his army, and it was too far away. The tanks didn't get many volleys off there. But so, they're still hot lava. Yeah, the tanks are definitely still hot lava. He has to stay away from them still. Well, he can counterattack here, I think. I don't think there's anything at all to defend over there at 6 o'clock. Uh-oh. But what if the lava could move? Lava does move. What if lava but had to, slowly? It had lava has to go into siege mode first. <laughs> you just gotta wait for it to cool down. Just keep running. Yeah. Oh! Oh my God! He blinked in front this, of his this zealots. Work? The this zealots is... are actually stuck behind right now, but he did get some good volleys off there. It looks like he's gonna take out all of these siege tanks, but the banshee's gonna be able to clean this up. The thing is, though, the uh, tanks take longer to make than the zealots and the. Uh, uh, no, they don't. Oh, wait. Yeah, you're right. 12 stalkers just warped in. Okay. Yeah. I think that Tasia might lose this game now. Actually, I think he has. I mean, this is. Wow. What a weird game. Can he pull back and stay alive right now? I don't now? know. And even if he can, is it worth it? Feels like a big no. The amount of damage he's taken. GG. Oh, well, you know what? This, like, I, I'm not sure. Maybe that was what Tasia wanted to do on this map all along. It is, I think it's a pretty good map for mech as far as maps go for mech in TVP. Yeah. Uh, but the amount of damage that the DT drop did 
was outstanding. It, it, it seemed did like an odd so choice. Much. It seemed like an odd choice to try to go into tank only mech after you're already that behind. I think if you never move, it can be okay. But like he ended up starting to chase the army. I think he took a poor engagement where all of his units that were meant for tanking damage for the tanks died out of range of the tanks. Ice and Chrome for map number two. Look at Tasia laughing here. Super, I think a lot of people would expect him to be losing to Tasia here, but if he takes one more game, yeah. he gets to go up against Rogue. He's one step closer to getting out. Yeah, well, I feel like Rogue might be a brick wall for him, but I guess we'll see. Can yep. he take down Tasia first, though? That's the question. Our game is ready. Tasia versus Super, game two starts now. <laughs> No ID call, okay. Um, so, uh, you, you, I, I'm actually want to say we are going to have one of these proxy builds that for some reason I'm more worried for Tasia in this situation yeah. than uh, yeah than I think I would be for most Terrans just seeing it, how it, this backfired in the past it, it did well when he did it three times right it like worked once and then didn't work twice yeah. so that wasn't that wasn't maybe the best but uh, you know I think a lot of it has to do with how quickly the Protoss figures out what's going on and this is a quick enough scout that he's gonna get up there and be like oh okay there's you know there's a barracks out there there's two gases and then the probe gets to check does the factory get built here or out on the map yeah and this is one of these builds unlike a lot of other proxy builds where it's completely ambiguous what's happening you can get a very good idea of what's going on here so yeah this is bad right now for um, for Tasia, but let's see how Super decides to play. Well, Super goes for a Cybernex core into the Nexus. So that's fine. You can do this against proxies. He sees the double gas, so I think that that kind of uh, makes him a bit more confident, I guess. He knows that it's going to be a factory follow-up. Now, this probe going back into check, and when he sees the factory there, I, I feel like you breathe a sigh of relief. If instead you go up and there's no factory right now, you're like, okay, now there's also a factory out there. This is going to be tight. Bunker up here in the main. Okay. This is uh, this is a ladder game right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. We never see us like. It's funny that the SCV refuses to come over to this yeah, side. Yeah, that's not one of our. Oh, yeah, it right clicked SCVs. anyways. Yeah. <laughs> All right, getting a pro. Yeah, I mean he's. he's Doing a little bit, I guess. Surprised by that bunker. But I guess it worked. He got a probe. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, the probe is worth more than the bunker, I guess. Sure. The, the cancellation. Cancellation's the not that much. 25 minerals for right. a 50 mineral probe. But, you know, we're we're stretching right now a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this hasn't been extremely successful. But you're adding, you know, you're adding a little bit of uh, chaos into this game. Super has to play it a little bit safe. He's not exactly sure what's happening. Twilight Council comes down now for Super. But Super's basically deflected all the uh, attempts to get ahead early on here from Tasia. And now we got to see what kind of game is, is Tasia going to bring. I think it has to be a more ordinary game than what we saw in game one. I don't think yeah. we're going to have mech again. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we have to see how much damage he's going to take as well. The uh, we just saw the Twilight finish. Oh, hey. Hey now, Tasteless. Yeah, this is suddenly enough. Four yeah. probe kills, and he gets back out, not suffering that many losses. We're getting things done right now. All right, Blink is on the way. So a more standard game here. Okay. Ooh, doesn't lose anything. Yeah, that's pretty smooth. It's harder and harder to ever keep the Reapers alive the longer the game is going on. And now we're going to have a Widowmine drop. I really like this. The Robo is still a ways off. Yeah, that is that is true. Uh, and he he's still definitely going to get a little bit with this at yeah. least. And he still has enough units he can try to dive in again here. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of little tactics that can be uh, tried out here. 
Yeah, he has a lot of potential for killing some more probes. Protoss is Look only... at the worker count. Like, yeah, he, he's got his command center at his natural now, and Protoss is only up three workers. Yeah. After it... this tech heavy opener. That's good. Okay, medevac boost time. Looks like it's. Is he actually going to go for it? We see him arcing. Stalker showing its power hitting that gateway. I know. That's the kind of damage I can do. So, yeah, I mean, at this point in time, probably not worth it to go in, but maybe you can try to send the Reapers in somewhere and then backdoor the, the Widow Mines in somewhere else. All right, now we're watching this, but I, I got my eyes on the mini-map. I'm trying to see if these... Um, yeah. This me uh, medevac is going to fly in at any point in time. I think it's too obvious to fly it in right now. Yeah, it does seem like it's a pretty elementary tactic, right? Yeah. So nothing. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's not bad to lose those Reapers. They don't do almost oh, anything. Yeah, There's at this a, point in the game, do they matter? It's funny how the Reaper works because it can be strong early on, but it rapidly becomes the most obsolete thing in the game. Observer coming in to check out what's what. Super appears to be going into a macro game, a forge, and a third nexus. Yeah, I don't think there's any opportunity for him to do anything. He's kind of pinned right now with that medevac floating around. So smart to get that going. Get his upgrades, get those Colossi out. Get a much better idea of what's going on, though. He's not being fooled. This is bioplay. His composition will do a bit better against it. So, from here, it does appear that Tage is going to bring us uh, to a game that I think he's going to look stronger in, just based off the play we've seen today. Getting bio upgrading his infantry. Um, now, the question over here for Super is going to be can he have cleaner engagements, right? I think a lot of um, you know his earlier games were just him not able to control anything that well and, and come out on top. He really had a hard time against Solar, but um, let's see how he does later on here. I also think that the uh, the TVP that we saw, I guess the game, game one that we saw here was one where like the unit comp was a little bit odd and once Tasia didn't handle it perfectly, mm -hmm. you dive in on the tanks and killing that many tanks is a death sentence. Yeah, yeah, you can't lose that many tanks. That's everything you've been building up through the whole game. Yeah, those t if you're going to lose that many tanks, you better kill two of his bases and his army with them. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's about it. It's a funny... Uh, oh, it actually finishes. Yeah, just a little bit of poking it's here It's been a there. little bit of a pattern here where Tasia likes to have his third uh, or fourth command center. Or in this case, he's his third command center just in range of stalkers that can hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite able to defend. And now we've got the beginnings of uh, Terran moving out on the map here. Five gates coming down for Protoss. Protoss continuing to get Colossi as Thermal Lance is close to finishing up as well. I don't think that uh, Tasia can attack with this at all. I think he has to no. play a very defensive game right now. No, I think you're completely correct. I think he's just getting started here. The buildup is going to continue on. Yeah, yeah. His well, early game didn't do, like, as much as he was hoping. Yeah. You know, maybe he can do, like, some light harassment or something, but... Definitely, you can't be counting on moving out and getting any, any damage done. There's enough gates, there's charge, there's plus one. Colossi. Yeah, and look at this. It, this is like pretty standard stuff on both sides, really. I feel like they're both playing solid. Fourth Nexus coming up right now. Continuing on upgrades. I'd like to see him throw down one more thing, though, super. Like, throw down a, either a second forge or more likely a Templar Archives. Yeah. So I think you don't want to don't want to stay on exactly what you have right here forever. <laughs> so uh, we're getting to what... Oh, hold on a second. Is Protoss going to actually try to attack in here? Is this, is this wise? No. I don't I, think he can attack here at all. Yeah. Not I, at I, all. I uh, I guess with Stalkers, you can always poke a little bit, but yeah. this is not an attackable it, it always seems scary, though, when you see the Stalkers versus just the Siege Tank range. Stalkers do their little pew-pew lasers, and then the Siege Tanks can actually obliterate anything that gets yeah. inside their uh, their range there, like we're seeing there. As he sees that tank volley, 
I mean, I think it's a really good play to stay on the very edge yeah. of Tasia's range. One thing you can do with, with Siege Tanks specifically is if they all unseed, you can run up and attack a little bit, and then as they siege up, you run back out. Yeah, get a little bit of damage, slow down the Terran as well. I mean, the Siege Tanks, if it didn't take time for them to siege up, they would be the most ridiculous thing ever. So the fact they have to have this animation to siege and unseed mm -hmm. is a big equalizer for, you know, because once you've gotten into that position, then you have the luxury of sieging up if they don't attack you in the midst of it. All right, Tasia trying to come out from a different angle. Super rotates his army immediately. Really good army movement. Tasia scanning, seeing where that fourth base is. More tanks coming up here. Everything seems to be aimed to try to hit the Protoss. Protoss, by the way, is maxed out. Um, probes are going to be pulled here. Oh, no, they're not. I'm sorry. It looked a little bit weird, I thought. Okay. Uh, oh, man. With that Raven there as well. And, oh, yeah. And eight tanks. Oh, my gosh. Seven tanks, rather. Here we Let's go. see. Oh, my God. That Blink Thorn on the left-hand side. Targeting down a couple of the tanks. Disables immediately on one of the Colossi. But look at those force fields. Yeah, one of the Archons was stuck in the back. I almost the, felt like he should have used an armor shred there. That more, is but. so close to being hit by all the tanks. It's crazy. All right, he backs up a little bit. Ooh. <laughs> um, Can he actually push any further? He needs to get the Colossus a little bit further back. You don't want that you don't up want to in the lead front. With it. Yeah. yeah, then it, it just... Colossus are tricky like that, too, because they automatically clump on top of your army, so everything's yeah. taking damage. Okay. Well, it looks like he led a little bit with something. We have the Archons in a better position here now. We see a dive in on top of these tanks up at the top. I'm not, I don't think this is quite enough. Hold on. Oh, he has another group of Zods coming in. So it feels like a pretty equal fight right now. An EMP yeah, comes I think, out. I think stalkers are still too brittle oh, though. Oh right? my God, Tasia actually just gonna hold. That's insane. That was that was a pretty close battle at the end there. I, I actually see, thought he might barely break through. I didn't even see anything on top of the tank. I thought he just turned on his own tank and was attacking it there. But Tasia decides to back up. Yeah, I think it's the right time because when you get those charge lots in there, right, it's it's going to be a lot harder to hold on with such a small force. All right, plus two is done here on armor for super, but Tasia's two two finishes up, so he's actually up and upgrade at this point. We still don't see any size storm, which makes me a bit nervous. When you're only relying on Colossus the whole time, it's like, well, Protoss has a second splash unit, and it's actually tasteless. It's better. What? Yeah. I like your whisper casting. Yeah. Yeah. ASMR Tosis. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, we have Terran backed off now. Um, I gotta say, you know, Super is getting to play the games that I think, you know, these are the exciting games to see because he's holding his own. Yeah, he's, he's playing a nice PvT overall. You can't really complain. Yeah. Uh, we have another attack in here. This is a very basic army, though. You see this army? It's, like, got a lot of power in its first hit, but he's got very little splash damage, very few long-term units. Right. If Tasia maneuvers correctly, he should be able to beat compositions like this. He and you can see, Super knows this. He's actually just running away now, taking a ton of extra free hits. Yeah, I don't know about Super moving that way there and then allowing almost all of his shields to yeah. be chipped off. I mean, minimum here you need a second robo. Minimum. If you're going to, like, you can't only make gateway units. You're not Adele Scott, and this is not 2009. <laughs> all right, he comes in. A good dive over here. Zealot spilling over on top of the infantry. Colossi Fire starting to thin that infantry out as well, but I don't know if there's enough sophistication here. Yeah. I mean, it seems like with the last Colossus, oh, barely surviving, I thought it might be shot down. I just wonder, you know, you can't tear and reinforce and shove in once again. Well, yeah, hey, that's the thing. If, if Tasia just continues this type of play where he's being positionally intelligent and continuing to utilize higher tech than super, like, you can't just make Zealots and Stalkers and, like, have two to three Colossus and, and win in this type of scenario against a player like Tasia. That is not something that should work, nor is it something that's going to work. 
Okay, Terran now moves into this area. That's going to be very hard for Protoss to ever cover. So this uh, cease, uh, Nexus, excuse me, is canceled here. Pretty bold, actually, for Protoss to even try to dive in there. The, well, the thing is, geography he wants, there is so good for Terran. Yeah, yeah, he wants engagements, but they need to be the right engagements for him. He needs to catch a piece of the army or the army in motion or like something this. like that. Yeah, his his army moves around very quickly. Yeah, Terran Tasia's, has to see each other. Yeah, exactly. All right, he blinks forward, actually starts picking off quite a few of the valuable units here. Tasia coming in, though, from multiple angles. Those two Colossus, let's see what type of damage they actually get done over here. They're doing quite a bit over here. The infantry, you know, the Colossi naturally counter the Marines when they get their shots connected with them. They're just such squishy units. 3-3 mm -hmm. three, three against 2-2 two, two right now. By the way, super expanding down towards Ooh. the bottom right. Oh, that's a big catch right there. And you know, it's the tanks that are the main line of defense for Protoss just walking all over you. Mm -hmm. all right, so, he picks off a Colossus, but at what cost there? It takes a lot oh of damage onto his army. The infantry is diving on top of this Colossi. I don't even know if he's going to kill that last Colossi. It finally goes down. Oh, man, he was microing with only Marines against the Colossi. The Marauders eventually end up picking it off, but he has taken a huge amount of damage, lost so much of his army, so much of his SCVs as well. Takes out the Warp Prism. That should end the attack, but there's already so much over here. It seems like Terran's going to have a really difficult time doing much else. Mm. A blink away. I tell you, we're seeing Tasia make maybe one or two very small mistakes and super jumping upon that. Yeah, he seems to be a much more uncomfortable moving tanks in this matchup versus against Zerg. Yeah, well, it's it's certainly very different. The tanks are going to die instantaneously if Protoss finds them. Yeah. Whereas, and that's what we just saw right there. Like, he just he went back in. Tasia was trying to bring his tanks into a better spot than where they were at. Yeah. Loses them, takes a bad engage. But there's still hope here for Tasia, I think. You know, he's down in workers at this point. There is a huge economy. But look at just look at the mini-map. See how many gases have been taken? There's just, like... He is really a gateway man right now. He is. Right? He's making two to three Colossus and then just Zealot Stalker. He's a gateway king among, among men. Yeah. He's super gateway man. Yeah. Literally. Yes. And X-ray vision. He's doing, yeah, he's doing a good job with it. But again, like, this is a game that if Tasia loses this, I guarantee he's going to be really frustrated with himself. Oh, for sure, man. I like that. That was cool. That was yeah. a good move by no, Super. Yeah, you can always get behind the minerals of a planetary and then just kill workers, and the planetary yeah. can't do anything. And I don't think he really needs his recalls. Like, he, it's not no. like he needs a bank no. pad or something. No, I don't think he has an army where he's going to get caught somewhere yeah. and just have to book it. Well, maybe he wishes he had it now, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might have spoken a little bit too yeah. soon on that. but Well, I thought he was going to move in for attack pretty soon and kind of dictate the flow of the game a bit more, but now he loses a base. So, yeah, I guess uh, those four soccer is not as valuable as this Nexus he just lost. But can this army chase this back over here and maybe squish 6 o'clock, 6.45? You know what's killing me about this? Is he's he's so gateway centric and he's he's like got no gas. He's just basically making zealots and all this, but he's not getting three three. It's like oh you know what? every I not... portion of this game he's been thinking I'm about to kill him. I'm about to kill him. You yeah, know that type of thing. You know it's funny. I had not noticed the lack of three three. I'm I'm just sort of assumed it's... that it was there. Two upgrades make a huge difference. Having Tasia be up two upgrades, like even. Like, if their armies just hit each other, I think Tasia wins. <laughs> well, the funny thing, too, is Super always just has two Colossi. Yeah. As his big, scary tech. And, you know, Tasia's kept consistent with uh, never-ending development here. Mm -hmm. His army's getting so sophisticated. Like, I think now... Watch these EMPs. Oh, my God. This is going to get melted. Yeah. This army is going to be an ice cream bar on the sun. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, I should have checked the ice cream bars versus sun. Yeah, it wasn't even an ice cream bar. It was more like a popsicle. Yeah. I mean, you can see Super is a good player, but he is not. If he was a, an RPG character, he hasn't filled in all of his upgrade slots. He hasn't maxed out his stats. Yeah. Taser really can do everything. And even when he makes a mistake, he's like, that's fine. I know how to tech and it goes. Yeah. And then we go to the tech tree for super and it's like oh he doesn't have the three three 
Tech. He doesn't have three three. He hasn't taken gases beyond his natural. Yeah. He's still just like, making two Colossus in every fight with an overwhelmingly large tier one army. Yeah. All right, Submarine gonna be our third map here in Tasia against Super. Get your sub-aquatic vehicles ready. <laughs> yeah, but you don't need them for the map. We're going to Submarine, get your periscopes out if you wanna watch. <laughs> ready the torpedoes. <laughs> Game three is on. Tasia versus Super, the winner goes on to face off against Rogue. <laughs> They need to water the grass on this map. You light a match on that part of the map, the whole map burns down. Hey, Artosis, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was processing this. Oh, my. So submarine, huh? Yep. That's where submarines go down there. You see that? Submarines. Marines that are below, right? Yes. Okay. Does he get the second gas here? Okay, so this yeah. is weird because we talked about Tasia was doing the same proxy stuff twice, and now, and like how that would never happen again. And then here we are. You know, it might be like, the thing is, I don't think he's gonna all in with it. While you could, he might just wanna have a more tech heavy opener because he knows in late game that he should be super. So if you're kind of keeping yeah. harassment pressure on them and you have enough technical units that you're not going to die to anything in the early game, yeah, that seems like a reasonable play against someone that you should outclass late game. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be really bummed out if Tasia loses this. Of course, it'll be exciting for Super, but... You but know, not for the rest of us, right? Not Tasia. for the rest of us, no. <laughs> well, the way that he went down against Solar... I can't imagine Rogue's going to be much difference. No, I think Rogue is going to be... Rogue is going to be one of those strong men that rips him in half, even though he's a phone book. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Oh, look at that. He actually hides his factory in the back of his base to make him think that it's more dedicated because you normally do your wall with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of cute. Ooh, hey. one kill. Didn't he even need to build a weird bunker this game. Oh, I thought he was going to get surrounded there. Two kills. When you make a zealot, when you know this is coming, and you make a zealot, and you still lose two probes? That's not good. There's a second uh, Reaper coming out now. Now, again, losing a few probes, it's, it's pretty big for among things that can happen for these kind of builds, but it's not like... We'll go back to this moment. Oh. Okay. Tasia. It's not like we're going to go back to that moment and say, well, that's why he lost. Yeah. It's just, you know, whenever you see somebody get ahead and moments are oftentimes nothing happens, it's a little bit exciting. Mm -hmm. But, you know, StarCraft 2, you, you now start out with quite a bit of workers, so it's not as impactful as losing one or two workers was uh, before. All right, Cyclone's gonna pop out. He'll be able to chase this away and finish up. Where's the Cyclone? How long does it take a Cyclone to build? Too long. So the barracks now will float back. Is it worth it at all, I wonder, to have the barracks float into the Protoss' base to scout? Honestly, I don't think so. I don't think so. I really don't, yeah. Now, is this going to be another DT drop? He has the Twilight. Okay, there Blink. it is. Now, we've seen this uh, style of play, if, if I'm getting a read on this correctly. A few more gates come down here, and then we're going to have uh, War Prism Stalkers with Blank trying to pressure the Terran. Oh, you think it might be the four gate? Right. That's, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You think you think he's just going to take a third and get Robo? If you go uh, three gate, you're going to take a third. Uh, if you go four gate, it's, it's more of a pressure build. We've got the third gate making here. See if a fourth goes down. The four gate build was one that Parting made pretty popular. Yeah, Showing Parting's that, so good with it. Yeah, well, he really has a, a very good read on what Terran can and can't do at any point in time in the early game. Yeah. 
And he has a really good read on what he can do, but yeah. not what he can't do. That's true. He doesn't. His only limit is no limit. Yeah. Harding's a very special player like that. Okay, so this is going to be a much more conservative build. You were right, Artos. This is going to get his third down here now. Mm. It's pretty standard on both sides. Reaper going to get a good scout off here. Just see Stalkers being warped in, that third base being taken, everything he kind of expects to see. Knows he can kind of sleep easy. You're not going to have your opponent take a third here and then go attack with other Stalkers and have huge damage potential or anything. All right, so that Reaper's cleaned up here. I want to watch the army movement here from Tasia as well. He seemed to, even though he won in the last game, he seems to struggle with the fluidity that Protoss have. And it's funny because Zerg is a very, very fluid race when they move as well. I mean, they basically have the most mobility in a lot of senses. Mm -hmm. You know, Banelings just roll through. Um, even when you get Lurkers, you get him to burrow very quickly and unburrow very quickly. But especially with his tanks, he seems to not know where to have them placed. It's kind of an interesting observation, I guess, in those two games. Oh, can't, can't be argued with. Oh my god, he actually just blinks right up here. This was what it's supposed to look like when you do the four gate build. Well, he's, I mean, he's killed some units, yeah. but he's lost like five stalkers, so I, well, of course, in a cancel, not too bad. How many stalkers are actually killed back there? Oh. I, I believe he lost five, but I, I could be off on that. Because he had nine stalkers originally. Wait, he did do a recall, though. Maybe that recall had brought some of them. Anyways, mech build here from Tasha. McDonald's. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yep, that's what I'm here for. Okay, not bad. Taking out those Banshees. Looks like one will get away. Uh, that will have Cloak depleted on it as well. Won't be used for a little while now. Yeah, speed now, once again. I'm almost more worried for Tasia now. Look, the weird theme in this series for Tasia has been his inability to move his tanks efficiently with his army. And if this mech build is going to be the same as the last one, by the way, it does seem like he has less variety in builds in this matchup. Yeah, it does. In the last two seasons, well, this season way. and the, the last one. Um, you got to keep your army very close with your tanks. Oh, my God. Well, I do want to point out he didn't lose a million billion SCVs and a ton of mining time at the beginning of That's this game. That's true. Unlike so, game one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and game one, like he, you know, he got to a good supply. He, he had a good army. It just it didn't go well. But in this game, all that's going to be more so. And he has that game to learn from as well. And be like, oh, okay, I gotta, I gotta pay more attention where my army's at. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I am feeling this for Tasia. As long as he takes it slow, because like Super is pretty dangerous walking around with his gateway-based armies. Stalker's headed back now. Again, I'm waiting for the big army movements. So yeah. far, Super just keeps killing tanks here and there. And, you know, it's funny. When you have games where players are just going for tanks, the easiest way to tell who's going to win is just did the tanks kill a lot or were they picked off? Because tanks are these units. When they're not sieged up, you can actually snipe them and then run back out. And it's like you didn't get Ooh. anything. Oh my god. Yeah, here we go. We have an observer coming over here. He'll probably blink down on top of this. What? <laughs> you should be able to blink over there. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. No, I actually I didn't even realize where we were on the map. I looked down. I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were a little bit further up. Imagine if that was real terrain. Yeah. Just drop siege tanks back there. Yeah. Just roam them over there and yeah. start hitting the uh, minerals. You have your swarm host Nidus pop up over there. <laughs> the most completely unstoppable yeah. thing of all time. <laughs> so yeah, those banshees are going to be stuck down there for a little bit. We have another nexus coming here in the upper right. Again, a gateway man here for Protoss. What? He's only going up to 16 gates, tasteless. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. To 
for Tat right there. Uh, all right, so yeah, he's he's making a lot of nexuses. Again, very, very, very low on gas, so he's going to try to overwhelm. But like we were talking about before, right? Uh, the the key to this for Tasia is taking it slow. If your opponent yeah. is playing a more gateway man style, make sure that you're maxed out and you're watching where their army is. You have to be in your position, you have to have huge supply, and then your better tech should pay off. Oh my god, that last tank. Okay, he does. Okay, so Take that off. So positionally, he can deny this base. This is an easy Yeah, Yeah, he can't shut kill down. the command center or anything, but he can slow it down. But again, this stuff is not as bad for Tasia as it looks right now. Like, right now, this looks amazing for Super. I'm not saying it's bad for Super. He's probably the game is going for him. He's, he feels like it's going all right. But if uh, Tasia takes it slow, his units scale better. Yeah. Are you going to fight a maxed out mech army with, you know, the same army we saw last game? But let's just keep just it and stalkers for days. Yeah. It's funny. This is actually being played a lot like it's a StarCraft 1 PB team. Yeah, it looks very is, much like that. Which is really weird because we actually almost never have it look. Those matchups are actually totally different in both games. Yeah. But yeah. this time but this around, looks it's very like, much like, all right, well, this actually looks exactly like this where now, it's just a bunch of Tier 1 units. But as time passes, the army is going to be better for Terran. If Super spreads his army here and hits from two sides, he can beat this army. And in fact, he's going to kill this command. That command's oh, gone. Oh, how funny. Tasia's like, he's going a little bit too fast, and he's making mostly battle mech units as well. And Cyclones are not really that great against these Zealots. And so the Zealots, actually, a lot of them get stuck behind the Stalkers, but I think the math will still come out here looking pretty good for Protoss. So yeah. I mean, this gets lower and lower. Yeah, man, uh, Tasia is not going to win this game. Mm -hmm. GG. Super wins. All right, good on Super. Uh, you know, I think he, he played this series pretty well overall. Uh, Tasia was a bit over eager trying to take that base. I feel like he did not identify what Super is doing, and this is not something we really ever see. Yeah. But he wasn't taking gases. He was just making units. So if you really slow down against that, let your upgrades continue to speak for you, let your tech can continue to speak for you, and the scaling of your army. If you put all that together, you're able to beat a strategy like that. I'm really surprised by these results, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I, I mean, thought Tasha had a chance to get out of the group. But I, I had kind of given up on Super after the first games, but he, he really redeemed himself. Now, there was some questionable movement from Tasia. Tasia seems to be looking at this matchup completely differently from the rest of the Terrans. Unlike the way that Tasia looks at TDZ, he seems to be completely in alignment with our other top tier Terran players, which is really interesting. I want to see, uh, assuming he gets into season three, and I think he will, I want to see how he plays. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a short break. When we come back, uh, Rogue versus Super, a fight, get to the round of 16. Don't go away.